Hey guys, Gallus and Island Transparency here. I am throwing out a little video of some of our city council meetings, uh, most of it revolving his truly, Officer Caldwell. Please come forward. Yes, sir, please come forward. I'm Bruce Redman. I have a property at 12012 I was working late one evening and noticed a police officer was parked in the private access at the end. We've had some problems with vandalism and theft in the back in there. So I went to ask him what was going on. I always videotape my interactions with the police, especially here in Galveston. As I approached, Lieutenant Caldwell opened the door to his car and maced me in the face without saying a single word. I asked him why. He then tased me twice. I turned my back to him for protection. He kicked my legs out from underneath me and pounded my head into the crushed asphalt that I pay for and maintain with my equipment and time. After the assault and being thrown into the back of the car, he informed me that I was publicly intoxicated on my property with only he and I present. <clears throat> On February 14th, a similar incident occurred, and reasonable articulable suspicion does not seem to be something their officers are concerned about when imprisoning people. While in custody, I spoke with other people who had been arrested for PI who were, in my opinion, not intoxicated, but also not given a breathalyzer, a blood test, both of which I have asked for and been denied. Um, when going to jail, your, uh, when released, your court date is set w within like four days, it's the next Thursday. A lot of people aren't able to get off. Um, they don't let you reschedule, at which point you can easily end up with a warrant and taking time off of work at that point. You're jeopardizing your job. And now you've already put out a couple hundred dollars to get out of jail. So people are pleading guilty to things that they haven't done for the simple fact that we're not setting up a system where they can even defend themselves against this. We've seen with the SWAT team and some other things that have happened here that there are elements of our police department that are letting things go and not sticking up for what's right or honoring their oath. I'd really like for us to get together and start looking at what we can do to kind of rein some of this stuff back in. When asked to identify, most GPD won't. As for 1027.8 of their code, they're supposed to hand you a business card, which I think is completely reasonable. Please look at Galveston Island Transparency on YouTube. You can see my arrest and some of my work in other communities. And uh, reach out to me. Let's fix some things. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Uh, as mentioned, at each time that we come to our public comment time, I uh, would mention that we would uh, restrict your uh, comments to three minutes, if you would, please. We have a timer clock here that will time you. Uh, sometimes people will ask, why don't we respond to you? Against uh, It's against the Open Meetings Act to respond to you when you are in public comment. Uh, but I wanted you to know that council and staff uh, is monitoring and listening to these comments. And I would highly recommend, I have three uh, forms here for individuals that want to speak. If there's anyone that wants to speak here in the audience, please get a form and fill that out uh, so that we can make sure that we get your name and address and all that so we can respond to you if necessary. I'm going to start, first of all, with uh, Bruce Redmond. All right. Hello, Council. Hello. Um, I was here last month, and we spoke about uh, an incident, and I, I kind of wanted to reiterate what it is that I do and what it is that I'm trying to accomplish here in the city with uh, filming the police. We film these actions because it's become apparent that some things have slid through the cracks and aren't being videotaped uh, with their body cameras and their dash cameras. And we need to stop the 
the bad policing and promote the good policing. The good officers that are out here trying to make change and trying to be a benefit to this society. So, with that, you know, there's there's some things that I talked about last time, like the, this public intoxication thing that has been used as basically a blanket arrest. Um, it requires no evidence and also requires for somebody to be put in jail, but offers them no way to defend themselves. I would like to put forth a couple of things in front of this council. I would like to see a citizen committee to oversee body cameras, to, to look through this stuff that's elected, discerned in some way. I'm not talking about just throwing this stuff out there for everybody in the world, but that's unredacted so that we as citizens can watch what our public servants are doing and make sure that it's being taken care of properly. Um, arrest was recently taken and going through the live video we counted over 42 policy violations in one arrest that's that's ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and violence towards people who have class c a misdemeanor and an arrest that by policy shouldn't have happened to begin with equipment is taken cell phones you take away somebody's cell phone I can't even get into my security footage at my property I have multiple accounts that I can't even see and so far as the PIs are concerned what I would like to push for is people having the ability to take a breathalyzer when arrested for a PI simple as that cost the city a dollar but it creates transparency and might stop and squash some of these arbitrary arrests. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, Nicholas Gilmore. How y'all doing? Fine, thank you. Um, Y'all don't know me, um, but I'm not new to Galveston. I had a great aunt and uncle that lived down on the West Beach most of their life. If you ever got meat from Randall's, he was the butcher over there for many, many years, Tony Corso. I grew up down here in Galveston fishing. I had an uncle that had a beach house in Tiki Island. Okay, I love this place, but it was brought to my attention that Galveston started having issues with some of their police officers, that they had some really bad officers. Now me having family in law enforcement and friends, I couldn't believe what I was actually hearing. So I came down here personally myself and I witnessed firsthand with my very own eyes this past Friday morning the tyranny, the lies, the cowardice. I mean, the list goes on and on, all off of one officer, okay? The citizens of Galveston do not deserve to have somebody that has that kind of mental health crisis within himself protecting the streets of Galveston Island, okay? They deserve better. This guy's literally on borderline sociopath and all that. Um, like I said, I, I didn't want to believe that somebody, a law enforcement officer, would act and behave that way. But like I said, when I witnessed it firsthand myself, I felt the need that I needed to come and bring it to y'all's attention. Um, you know, like Bruce said, um, you know, Falsely arresting somebody uh, messes with that individual's mental health, okay? It, people rely on a good background to get good jobs, so on and such forth. Me personally, I have my license to carry. 
I don't have any convictions on my record. Okay, and for me to be a, to have been treated the way that I was treated by simply walking or standing on a sidewalk was absolutely positively ridiculous. This is a tourist city. People are lying the streets on um, uh, for Mardi Gras, uh, up and down the seawall, and I don't see Galveston PD arresting every single person that's standing on the sidewalk. But this is what one bad officer wants to do. Y'all need to remove him. Thank you. Uh, Bobby Kennedy. Bobby? All right, folks, I'm going to tell y'all what I'm going to say when this thing is going to hurt. Oh, y'all going to hate me when I get down here, okay? But I got to speak what I feel is the truth, okay? This is my disclaimer. It's my personal opinion and uh, my speculation of the truth, okay? My name is Bobby J. Kennedy. I'm a citizen of the city of Galveston so long now, I actually attended Goliad Elementary. Well, it used to be on 31st and around Avenue K and through Avenue M. I was here before the San Luis Hotel on Fort Crockett was here. Just to let you know that this is my home, long before the majority of you even came here from other places, such as New York, to use your money to gain access to our local government, become our mayor's councilman, mayor pro tems, so that you can implement the same type of unconstitutional policies and ordinances like what you have in New York. Now, what I'm seeing sitting there on our city government over the past three years, by using the color of law, you have all conspired to violate the civil rights of those of us who have had this as our home for our entire lives. It is and has been your political agenda under the leadership of Mayor Craig Brown and our city manager Brian Maxwell to use unconstitutional ordinances to violate the civil rights of the lifelong working class citizens of the city of Galveston and attempt to force us to sell out to the filthy rich to get rid of what you consider to be in your minds the undesirable to create a filthy rich playground for the filthy rich and the tourists only. You want the working class to work that work for under $28,000 a year to live across the causeway on the mainland, and you are using your peace officers and police officers to, that you start out at 58000 on up to 120000 a year to further that political agenda. Now, what is the definition of a Gestapo? Okay, now, you actually went as far as firing what I think was one of the best chiefs that the Galveston Police Department has ever seen, Chief Haynes, because he refused to participate in your political agenda by enforcing unconstitutional ordinances. What you first hired Bush Stroud to do, and he did, but he no longer does because he don't need to, because you now have hired Chief Doug Bally, who not only agreed to enforce these unconstitutional ordinances, but he's actually ordering and allowing his commanding officers and his officers to enforce these illegal ordinances. You all know that the working man that works for a living can't really afford your court system, so they usually just pay the fines and end up selling and moving on, giving you all what you want. Now, the arrest made by Lieutenant Caldwell on 317-2023 at or about 145 in the a.m. is a prime example. Uh, let's just go straight to the arrest of Mr. Bruce Redmond, okay? whom I know 100% was not drunk, nor had he had a drink of alcohol that entire day. So he is doing nothing more than standing on a sidewalk, engaging in a constitutionally protected activity, when he was assaulted and accosted by one Lieutenant Joe Caldwell of the Galveston Police Department for doing nothing. As a fact, Lieutenant Caldwell illegally ordered Mr. Redmond to leave for no other reason than the fact that Lieutenant Caldwell wants no transparency, and he was being filmed in the course of his duty to ensure accountability and safety for all, not just for the cop, but for the citizen as well. You say blue lives matter. What about our lives? Who is protecting we the people? The only protection the citizen has from the murderous police officer is the civilian camera in the hands of them like Mr. Redmond. But I digress and I am sorry. At the time, Lieutenant Caldwell unlawfully ordered Mr. Redmond to leave. Mr. Redmond replied by saying, sir, I'm only, I'm not doing anything. I'm just standing here on the sidewalk. At what time Lieutenant Caldwell replied with an evil, wicked grin on his face. That is right. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy, excuse me. We expired the three minutes, but go ahead. Can you finish? Go ahead and wrap that up if you wouldn't mind, sir. I got it just a few seconds here real quick. All right. Okay. So anyway, that's right. You're just standing on the sidewalk. You can't do that. You're under arrest for impeding the sidewalk. 
This is what the man was arrested for. Okay? He then goes on and makes up lies and falsely accuses Mr. Redman of being drunk. What Caldwell has done and been doing many, to many of our citizens, he is a liar and he has had very low moral turpitude. And uh, he has no business being a police officer, much less a supervising l lieutenant. And while I appreciate them trying to stop his harassing of our citizens, being bullies with badges is not going to cut it. He was told to get off the sidewalk, and he didn't do it, so he was arrested. But if you stand in the street, you get arrested. Where is the freedom or even the logic here? Caldwell is out of control, and he needs to be fired last month. Not next week, not today, not next year. He needs to be fired last month. Mr. Kennedy, excuse me. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry your time is up, sir. All right. I told you I was going to hate you whenever you are done, man, but it's not your opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a, a form filled out. There's no name. It just says good citizen here. I'm not sure. Uh, are you the good citizen, sir? Yeah. Okay. Hello. My name is Austin Lewis. I'm the owner-operator of Good Citizen News, and I'm the owner of the CNN. Last month, I summarized how Caldwell attacked, tased, maced, uh, and maced Bruce Redman. I also informed you of my arrest by, Caldwell, uh, by Lieutenant Joel Caldwell for interference on September 14th of 2022. On March 17th, 2023, Lieutenant Joel Caldwell arrested me for impeding a sidewalk and disorderly conduct. All we did was photograph and video the police. We actually were threatened by a man across the street who threatened to come, quote, whoop our ass. All we, uh, yeah, okay, I'll answer that. When Caldwell arrested me, he twisted the cuffs to cause pain. I had to go to the hospital after I got out of the jail. He also broke my recording equipment, and after, uh, and after he cuffed me, uh, after, cu uh, yeah, he, after cuffed and compliant, he drags me across the street to order the arrest of another photographer. That was Nicholas Gilmore out there. It was at this point I tell Caldwell to, keep, uh, uh, to not keep tweaking my wrist upwards, causing extreme pain. At the truck, I am thrown against the hood to be frisked, and another cam cameraman starts to video me... Uh, yeah, thrown up against the hood and frisked. And as the other cameraman, as another cameraman starts to video it, Caldwell grabs me by my hair and drags me around the back of the truck, still applying upward pressure on my wrist and hands in pain. He throws me up against the bed of the truck, kicks my legs repeatedly out from underneath me. He repeats, he repeat, uh, he proceeds to then smash my head downwards against the bed of the truck. And as the cameraman comes across, uh, so you can see from the, the cab and you can see over the bed, he then lifts my head back up, shoves me in the crack between the toolbox and the cab, and then throws me into the vehicle. I can't even get my legs in the vehicle before he slams my foot in the door, causing extreme pain and numbness twice before he finally gets my foot out of the door and closes it. Or I'm able to get it in, I should say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, quite twice. Okay. I requested medical attention. None ever came. People from the outside who saw this happen live requested medical. Caldwell called it off. I wonder why. Maybe it's because he didn't want pictures taken or the evidence of the quarter inch gouges in both of my wrists and arms. Maybe it was for my numb foot. Or maybe he just doesn't care. Well, here are some facts that we counted at least 30 to 40 different policy violations by officer, well, Lieutenant Caldwell, uh, out of the GPD policy manual. Some are city regulations, some are controlled by the state and federal laws. So Caldwell doesn't care about the policy and apparently state or federal law. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good. Uh, did we have some written comments, uh, Janelle? We do. We have uh, 12, I believe. If you could read those, please. Okay. Patricia Fodor. Pass a law to keep the First Amendment auditors from harassing people. 
Hi, can you pass a law in your state to keep the First Amendment, Amendment auditors from going into police stations and federal buildings and city hall as all they do is hate ads, the good hardworking people for videos so they can make money on YouTube? Next is from uh, Mad American. On March 17th, Lieutenant Caldwell made three arrests on live streams. The arrests were made as impeding a sidewalk while people were walking on the sidewalk. I'm not sure what this officer was thinking, but he violated the rights of these individuals. He used excessive force on one citizen, injuring his head, wrist, and foot. Did he file paperwork for use of excessive force? How despicable this officer is to arrest individuals practicing their rights on a public sidewalk. These are rights violations, unreal. Next is from uh, Fire, Fire Caldwell. The, uh, constitutional violations by GPD Lieutenant Caldwell. Fire Lieutenant Caldwell. Lieutenant Caldwell is the menace to society. Fire Lieutenant Caldwell. Lieutenant Caldwell is opening up the city of Galveston to multiple lawsuits. Fire Lieutenant Caldwell. Lieutenant Caldwell seems to believe he has carte blanche to do as he wishes when interacting with the public. Fire Lieutenant Caldwell. Lieutenant Caldwell is a walking civil rights violating soci sociopath. Fire Lieutenant Caldwell. Lieutenant Caldwell violates GPD policies by hiding people he arrests in a juvenile holding cell at GPD. Fire Lieutenant Caldwell. Next is from We the People. Regards to Officer Caldwell. City Council needs to immediately remove and charge Caldwell for multiple excessive force arrest, illegal detainments, and violations of civil rights under the color of law. We the people will not stand for this public servant harassing and abusing us anymore. And the last one is from Carolyn Rodriguez. Uh, Mayor, I spoke to her on the phone earlier today, and she was going to be here after 6 o'clock. I'm not sure if she's here yet, but she... Okay. <laughs> Carolyn Rodriguez, come on up. So um, I'm here to talk to you about the police department, of course, and um, anything I might say might not, it might, probably won't change anything, but at least it'll be on record for you to understand what's going on. And I just want to let you all know that just because they have that uniform on, that doesn't mean they're the good guys. So I was looking at your data, and you can learn a lot by, by data. I don't know if any of you guys read data, but you can just infer a lot from it. So here you have 141 officers. And that's 30 cops per 10,000 people. There's so, that's more than 96% of all other police departments in Texas. So what can you infer from that number, being that they have, you guys have so many? What can you infer from that? What can you, when, what can you infer from that? If 98% of the people walk in here with umbrellas, what can you infer? That it's raining outside. Well, with this number I'm telling you right now, that means you're spending a lot on um, the budget for them. So they're making tons of salary. They have all kinds of little, little toys that they can play with. They have, you're spending a lot of money on them. But what you're not spending money on is um, like um, extra education for them because they're not de-escalating the situations. They're just making them worse. And how do I know that? Because 79, 80, I'm sorry, 80% 80 of your arrests here were for low level offenses, which means that de-escalation could have been used but probably wasn't because that number is really, really high. So at the academy, they're taught to make sure that their subject complies. And they think that just by walking up to the situation that them wearing a uniform should make people comply, right? But they're allowed to use any kind of force to make that person comply. They can tase them, they can punch them in the face, they can knock them down, they can put their knee on their neck, all sorts of force to make that person comply. So. Um, that needs to change. Another thing I noticed was that 17% of the Galveston population is black. 17%. But 36% of your arrests are done on black people. Hmm. What does that mean? What could, that, what could you infer from that? Could you infer that maybe black people commit more crimes? Could that be? I don't think so. I think that there's some kind of racism going on around here just by that number. You can call me crazy, but about five years ago, you had two fellows that were um, 
come in the police department. One was black, one was white. And even though they were both doing the same crime, filming the police department, only the black guy got arrested. I <laughs> wonder why that happened. Okay, and then that, those officers got in trouble because that person did not have to uh, identify who he was because they did not have reasonable, articulable suspicion of a crime. So he didn't identify himself. But what they did was they took his little clicker out of the, of the, of the, the stuff that they had collected off of him, and they went around to the found. We lose audio on Carolina right there, but we've got a whole bunch more stuff coming on that Caldwell arrest right around the corner, guys. This is just a little warm-up and reminder. Drop a comment. See you later.